Well, it looks like it's on to me. Hey, good morning. It is getting late. It's 20 after 6. The day's almost gone. <laughs> hey, I got to do something real quick. I want to talk about uh, electric lead screw reverse. I got to get this uh, uh, call it chuck out and put the driver in for uh, the uh, vertical head attachment. So I'm going to loosen this, get that in here. Give it a smack. Check this out. Patent applied for. I think it's 1930 snap on. But I use it for my drawbar. It's retired. I hope you're all doing good. And it goes something like that. Here's the spline driver. And that goes in here. Just like that. Get the big wrench on it. Put the wrench back in the convenient holder. <laughs> oh, I got two on. See, this slides back. I got to take my adapter out. But let's get over here and talk about uh, screw threads and electric lead screw reverse which is kind of a cool subject I think it'll be kind of fun let's see if I can get this uh, right over the um, oh I managed to take that boom loose bear with me oh yeah now I got to uh, there's a screw here I can get that down yeah, right there. I think that if I can lock everything up, that looks good. Just like that. Okay. Now, the electric lead screw reverse on the Monarch 10 E actually does nothing of the sort. All it does is shut the spindle off using these stops that are down below here. But I want to show you something with the Y um, lathes have that. Now, let's look. This is pretty neat here. This machine's in just excellent shape. I put the half nuts in, and here's the, the uh, travel dial. It shows two thousands with the half, you know, play. Um, this machine was um, ordered... Uh, Originally with all the uh, thread cutting stuff on it, a custom paint job, but they never they never cut a single screw thread with it. Um, it did have one thousandths play when I got it. Now it's got two thousandths. Okay, I'll take the half nuts off. Now, I'm not going to start the machine, but when the half nuts are turning, they'll come from that direction. Hopefully you can see the number. And when the number comes up, you engage the half nuts, right? Well, what happens when you do that multiple times, there can be an error of when those half nuts um, grab, there's slop in the half nut mechanism here. And so that stuff takes a while to settle in.
So with the lead screw reverse machines, and particularly the hard inch, the hard inch does not have a thread dial, and the half nuts are left engaged um, the whole time. And it's got to stop. I've never cut threads on one, but I've watched it. A friend of mine has one. And it's got a cool retract on, on the uh, top slide, a lever retract. The Monarch here um, has this dial stop, all right, so you can, you know, get back um, <clears throat> to your depth. But when you're, when you're engaging these half nuts and it comes up like that, and you're trying to get them in, you can try to stab them in, right? Well, if they don't go in all the way, as this thing's spinning, exactly all the way, then the carriage is going to lag from your last cut. And it's, uh, especially notice uh, that problem on, uh, on lighter weight machines, uh, especially... And even and even heavy, heavy machines. It's called. Uh, I've heard it referred to as cam uh, camming in error of the half nuts. And uh, if you don't if you don't have lead screw reverse, what you got to do is get is all uh, try to have the tool ahead of the work. And when you engage the half nuts, the it, let the carriage travel an inch or so. Even put, um, let me get the over here, even put a little bit of tension on the hand wheel as, as it's approaching the thread to help settle those uh, half nuts in. That's if you don't have lead screw reverse. Now, if you have lead screw reverse, you leave the half nuts engaged all the time. And then you reverse uh, the machine to return back to the start of the thread. And that way, you totally avoid uh, that camming in error and, and it going back and forth and gauge settles them in and it'll make your threads more accurate. Now that's why people say that hard inch cuts threads better than anything. That's one of the reasons why uh, you eliminate that half nut um, error. By that mechanism and the way they do it and a lot of uh, uh, heavier lathes too is a single tooth clutch on the lead screw so it kicks that out and then it'll kick it back in without uh, losing your timing especially with like metric threads so um, the electric lead screw reverse is used for like odd leads, metric threads that the thread dial, um, it won't be accurate on. But it's also used to get the most accurate threads possible out of your machine. All right. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here. Now, now when I say that uh, it doesn't actually reverse the machine, it doesn't. All it does is shut the spindle off. So let's look at this mechanism here. This, this uh, lead screw reverse steel has these uh, forked, uh, uh, I don't know they call it a fork, and it grabs these dogs, rotates the, uh, the uh, operating rod, see? So that's all it does. So it it uh, comes over, and uh, one of the, the fork on this other side will lift the lift the lever up to to stop. That's all it does. You have to reverse the machine. So all the electric lead screw reverse is does is stop the machine. <laughs> okay. Now what what makes it work is those di is the di <coughs> dynamic braking. And uh, I, I think I showed how that is, where it uh, shorts the armature out on the 10 E and breaks it with these uh, really large uh, uh, coil resistors here. See, I can't see, but I think you can. Okay, so uh, 
Uh, an electric uh, DC motor can also turn into a generator, and that's what they do when they throw the uh, uh, those coils uh, across the uh, armature. So all that energy goes in into those coils, and it, and it brings the uh, spindle to a reliable stop in two seconds. Now, um, the uh, axle sign that I got works like a Monarch 10 double E in a total mechanical way. Um, now that machine, it has uh, um, an internal reverse gear, like the transmission on an old old car, or like that old truck that's got reverse gear. So the Axelson's got that reverse gear. When you're, when you're in forward, and uh, you push it to neutral, a hydraulic brake happens. It's got like 30 pounds oil pressure to circulate the oil in it, and it directs that to a brake. And that, that'll break the spindle to a stop, S just like the resistors electronically break the Monarch uh, 10 E down, okay? So on, on the Axelson, it, uh, it uses a mechanical brake. And then when you push the uh, lever to reverse, the machine reverses. Now, I did a demonstration of that uh, action on that old axle sent out there in the driveway where I was running it, I don't, I don't know, uh, around 100 RPM or something like that. And I was going directly from forward to reverse. And it, and it, would, uh, it acted like, the, uh, like I was showing the... Uh, reversing um, capability of this Monarch 10 E. And if you take machines, really good machines that I've had, like South Bend's, they don't have any good braking at all. So you got to use the half nuts. And on, on that, you got to practice. And oh, let me get back over here. When you engage the half nuts, try to engage them early. I'm going to get it back on the tripod. And see if I can get this over here and show you this. On to that thread dial here. That seems to be okay if it doesn't drift. A uh, whole bunch of knobs here. I think that's okay. Okay, so you're watching the thread dial. And it's coming like that. And you got to find the spot. I think you can see my hand on the lever here. And... I push down, let's see, let's get a little head here. I push down and it travels and then you can feel the lever drop all the way down. Okay, then it'll go. So what you wanna do is find the spot and it probably won't be on the line. Just when you get close to the line, start moving the lever down. Let's see, make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm watching that line, and it's coming very close. So I start moving the lever down, and the half nuts are on the tops of the threads, right, on the crest. So as it travels, you can feel the half nut lever drop down to the very bottom of the thread, and that's where you want it. Because if it doesn't, like if you're trying to stab it in, let's see, let's try it there. You're trying to stab it in, like right there, look, a little bit there, maybe right there. It stopped, and the carriage will travel, but it's lacking, lagging behind, okay? Lagging behind. And what happens, this is where you notice this, using the half nuts. It's like you're cutting a thread, you're cutting a thread, and then you want to get down to some finish cuts, or on real lightweight lathes, you can do spring cuts. That's when you're going to have the problem. All of a sudden, everything looks good. You engage the half nuts and bang, you take a big cut. That's what happened is you got the, uh, you either engage too early or too late. You know, it's usually too late that causes the problem. So you, you feel it. You want it, you want it to come and just feel it where it's sitting on top of the thread. And then it goes just a little bit further. And then you can slide it down. You can slide it right down into the thread. See? Something like this. 
a little bit of backlash in that dial there. Okay, I can feel it sitting on the top of the thread a little bit further. Bang! Then it's in, and you want to try to be really consistent. Okay, try to get down to, the, try to get it down there, and uh, if it doesn't feel right, stop. And if you're using the half nuts, try to keep uh, um, the tool like an inch or so. Okay. Try to keep the tool an inch or so ahead, if you can. Let it settle in. Put a little tension on the hand wheel, okay? You have to do that like on an atlas slave, or the first thread will be drunk <laughs> from all the flex, you know? Uh, you can learn a lot on an, on an atlas, let me tell you. You really can. So, that's just some tips you have, you, you know, I want to uh, just get across um, about that cam in error and, and how uh, the electric lead screw or leaving uh, the uh, half nuts engaged. Now, um, a lot of uh, the uh, big American lathes have a, have a similar um, um, mechanism as the hard inch with a, a single tooth clutch. And uh, you can see some people uh, demonstrate that uh, with the Pratt & Whitney lathes and Monarchs and stuff like that on other channels. Uh, one guy that cuts a lot of threads is uh, Kimber Zellick. He cuts all kinds of uh, multi-start threads and stuff. And his uh, Pratt & Whitney lathe has that. Now, when I was shopping around for that, for a geared head lathe to supplement uh, the uh, old uh, milling machine here and that radial drill, I go, heck, I'm going to get an old geared head lathe. And those three machines in itself is a pretty cool machine shop, you know. Uh, the other stuff I have here, the cutter grinder, jig bores, and the Monarch 10 Ws is for fighter work. But uh, I'm going to be doing an awful lot of... Um, um, antique uh, fix and stuff in the future. I just, I just know it. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm hoping that I can kind of get that across on that lead screw reverse. So it's um, valuable for cutting the most precise threads possible. It, it really is. It works real good. But you should also practice with the half nuts, you know, and and. You can tell when <laughs> you can tell when the half nut engagement is off because you'll have an unexpected heavy cut. You probably trash your threads out. Now another thing is uh, in hydraulics. I've worked in hydraulics for years and years and years, and you cut a lot of threads that are exactly twelve threads per inch, and all kind <laughs> and other threads too. Now the name of the game in hydraulics is. Um, the nut must spin on um, and off without uh, grabbing, with no perceivable shake. That is an excellent thread for uh, hydraulics. And the reason for that is, is because the movement of like hydraulic cylinders inside that uh, tube where the piston is, when that, <laughs> when the rods really extended out, you wouldn't believe the stress on the piston. You know, and uh, the stress on threads. Now, if you take a look at Caterpillar and hydraulic cylinder rod, you will not see a thread groove. You know, that, that's just not going to happen. And the reason for that is, is uh, those stuff is under more stress than you would believe. And over a period of time, a cylinder rod will bust right off uh, if it's got a... Uh, a thread groove. It's just part of the metal fatigue. And you got to figure like excavators and stuff like that is uh, the most severe, severe duty. So in that case, you learn to fade the thread out or feather it out. And uh, that takes a little bit of practice. And, and after a while, uh, you um, will not want to put thread grooves in because it just takes too long. And the Monarch 10 E is just excellent for that with the, with the electric lead screw reverse. Because uh, when you hear the switch 
kick out. You got up just about three quarters of a turn of the spindle to fade the thread out. It's just fantastic. You, you know, you hear the switch go click, then you, then you just back the tool out. Then the, the spindle dynam dynamically breaks in just about a turn and you fade the thread out just perfect every time. It's just fantastic. And uh, you have to do that uh, no matter what length you're using, just you know, just because just because of that. Now, now this is this is pretty cool. Now on these uh, on these uh, Monarch ten double E's here, they have electric lead screw reverse. Well, a lot of operators really don't like it because it's sloppy. It's got all this crap here. See that? And the switches. And it's, it's just, uh, it's sloppy. Now you get over here. This is the standard, uh, whoop. This is the standard um, spindle lever here. It, it, there's an electric switch back there. And there's no gears. There's no rods. There's nothing. See? So on this way... You can do the same thing as electric lead screw reverse, except for you become the electric lead screw reverse. You just watch, flip the lever, pull your tool, then go like that, and it just runs back. See, it's just that easy. You don't have to have that. But Watching myself uh, the last time I cut threads, uh, I'm, I'm out of practice cutting threads. So I'm not uh, cutting threads on hydraulic solder rod every single day or, or whatever. And I, you get a bit out of, pract out of practice. So that uh, electric lead screw reverse feature is kind of handy for me now because I kind of slowed down. But the hot dog machine is just... Uh, uh, you'll see the inch metric lathes that come standard with electric lead screw reverse without it. And it was custom ordered that way because the operator goes, I don't like electric lead screw reverse. And, I, and one of the older guys I know just absolutely hates the thing. And the lady has, has it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, I guess operator preference. But I find myself uh, slower reactions uh, in my older age. It's just the way it is. And I kind of realized that watching the last video of myself uh, uh, cutting screw threads. So I'm doing the best I can here. <laughs> so that's the deal. The deal with that uh, lead screw reverse. Okay. And uh, I, I hope I explained that okay. But with that, leaving the half nuts engaged, you're going to get the most accurate threads on your machine, you know, because of that camming in there. So uh, I guess you could say uh, you're uh, with, uh, using half nuts, your, your thread is only as good as the last uh, cut you made. But with the uh, with an electric lead screw reverse or the, the uh, lead screw reverse mechanisms, uh, leaving half nuts in, you just reduce all the air and you'll get, you'll get the best threads that way. But it's hard to do sometimes. But the axle sim, it's, it's really quite easy as the uh, Monarch 10 double E because it's got that reverse gear. And I think the only other way that I know of that has that is some models of the Dean Smith and Grace, which is, it's just a great feature. I don't know. I've rambled on enough about this, and uh, I'll demonstrate more of this stuff and talk about it as uh, I need to cut threads. And uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting ready to uh, shuffle stuff around in here, and uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'll work on it. And I'll keep in touch. And, see what happens. If I got this thing tore up, there's some other videos I can make on uh, precision measuring tools and things. So I'll keep moving along. And you guys have a good day. Okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna play with that mill a little bit. I was gonna do it yesterday, but you know the big boss got a hold of me and uh, had me do some work on the house. Okay. I will be back and uh, take care.